Incorrect. What's up? <laughs> and welcome Incorrect. to Incorrect. <laughs> to First Geek 411. I am not you your wife. Will, yeah, you two will have no clue what happened. Um, I'm your host, Cameron Franklin, and with me, as always, from West Coast, Best Coast, eating what looked like a piece of pie, and we're, we're trying to stall. Gotta believe, gotta believe, is Emma. Emma, how are you doing? Good. I am eating uh, beans and rice, which is both delicious and good on a budget. Yes. I'm definitely all not the pie. funny the the fun tasty vegetables off the top of it already nice. like tomatoes and avocados but you make a big batch and then you just eat it for the next month and a half so nice. i'm doing good how are you doing you know doing good it's um you know it's black friday week so it craziness is, is ensuing but we're having fun and that's what counts and so and this week we got some crazy news to talk about um our big topics are the announcement of the last of us part two remastered as well as some spider-man 4 rumors but we got a handful of other topics um to discuss like um bioshock the walking dead and doctor who but before we get into that as always you can find us on our social media as one geek 411 check out our facebook twitter and instagram um Join us on Discord to chat throughout the week. Shoot us an email at 1stgeek411 at gmail.com. Come and watch live Monday nights at 6.45 Mountain Time and find the videos over on our YouTube. You can also go and check out our Red Bubble store. Emma, yeah, what have you been up to this week? I have been doing things. Um, first and foremost, the most boring thing for pretty much everyone else, but exciting for me, is that yesterday yeah yesterday because yesterday was sunday i got to and finally filmed my um scene for my directing class um which is very exciting partially slash mostly because it's like the last big thing of the semester that i need needed to do now it's just like piecing together the footage and everything to like have a presentable scene so it's like my final project for my directing class you pick a scene from something and then you get your actors and film it block it out do all that fun stuff and it was quite fun i had great actors and they were very delightful to work with and very patient for this this one woman band moving the cameras and the lights all around because nice. everyone's so insanely busy that like no one could help and i'm like it's okay I will simplify, and I simplified, nice. and it worked well. Um, so what that scene was, fun. was it? It was <coughs> scene three from a play called Dead Man's Cell Phone, uh, which is basically, it opens up with this woman at a coffee shop, and the guy, like, three tables down has a heart attack, and she doesn't know it, and, then okay. his, and dies, and <laughs> then his phone starts going off, so it's like her like encountering his family and friends um of this stranger who she just happened to be near um and it's a very Ooh. fascinating story i like she it it handles grief and everything so the third scene is like her um uh, meeting his girlfriend so yeah uh so that was you know not super exciting but I had a good time doing it. So yeah, figured I'd report on film school stuff. Nice. That's how life is going. Almost um, done. Almost done. Almost there. I am also playing The Last of Us 2 for like the third time, the millionth time, the X nth time. <laughs> because mushroom zombies, it's fun. Mushroom. I like mushroom. to. Badger, 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 badger. <laughs> um, I am almost done catching up on D&D stuff. I am at and in the middle of Mighty Nine Reunion live show, which has been very fun. Um, even though I've never actually finished watching Campaign 2 of Critical Role. But that's okay. Um, and then Crown, the Crown, new season has come out. So that's very fun. I'm watching that. I like my British TV. And I got my 
Saturday ticket for Emerald City Comic Con in nice. February slash March. So that'll be fun. My best friend and I are going together and we're doing our Zero Fail and Crowley costumes. Ooh, fun. So we will actually be in person for that and it will be very exciting. <coughs> so we are looking forward to it and cannot wait. Nice. So that has been my week. Let's see. So for me, I finished Jedi Survivor. Finally. Woo. I think in hindsight, I was like one mission away end of last week. Uh, when we talked last time we talked, um, I think I had like, like literally one mission left and I thought there was more to it and there was not. And so here we are. Um, so I finished that. Um, I think I ended up dropping the difficulty down to easy and I was like, let's just get through this, um, living my best life there. And then, um, after that, I started playing Hi-Fi Rush because I realized that I have Game Pass and it's being nominated for a handful of awards for this year. And so I dove into that. I also playing that on easy as someone who like, um, like it's, it's, it's really interesting because it's like a rhythm action game. And so like you don't have to like attack on the beat or anything, but your attacks are more powerful if you do. Yep. And so... Um, it's really weird. And I feel like playing it on easy gives me the ability to where hitting the beats is just pure upside. <laughs> like I don't yeah. need to, <laughs> um, like, I don't think I have died in combat. Maybe I've died once in combat. Um, but it really makes it so like the battles aren't too bad, um, and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm definitely enjoying that, um, more than I would be if it was, um, like on hard where I'm actually like needing to hit beats and needing yeah. to do stuff like that. And so that's been very positive and has been a lot of fun. Um, and then I also started playing ratchet and clank rift apart, uh, cause it's on PlayStation plus extra. And I was very much in like an insomniac mood after beating Spider-Man. And so I was like, you know what, let's just go and let's, let's just do a game that I had missed when it came out it's nice and light and fun and it's been a great time. And so I'm really enjoying going through that as well. Um, I also, uh, I don't know if I've talked about this on um, first geek, but one of the things that I've been doing through GG app is keeping track of how many games I played this year. Uh, Cause I'm trying to like make a better effort to actually like keep up. And so like talking played, not beaten. Um, I'm on like my 34th game with ratchet and clank. Um, and I have like, I've obviously Ratchet and Clank and Hi-Fi Rush are not indies, but like trying to get more indies in there, hoping to get some stuff to like close out. I would love to break at least 40 for this year. And so, um, I, I just want to point out I'm on the website to create an account. Cause this sounds great. And you know how with like the, the boxes where you put in your email and, and stuff, mm -hmm. typically they give an example their example is Nathan Drake. <laughs> <laughs> and I love that. Hey, okay, continue. Uh, yeah. Make an account. We'll be, we can be friends, I think. Um, I think there's a friends setting. I could be wrong. Uh, but yeah, so like I've been enjoying that and like going through uh, has also given me like the ability to mark like, oh, I platinumed these games. These are games I finished, that kind of thing. And so, um, and so we're getting close. Like I said, I want to break at least 40. I I think I had 23 last year <coughs> for 2022. And so I'm already like 10 over and I would love to nice. uh, just try more games. And so, um, and then this past weekend, a friend of mine came down to visit. Uh, and so we had a pretty geeky weekend. I taught him how to play Lorcana and then we played, a bunch of magic, the gathering, we played parks. Um, we went and checked out a bunch of the local like card game shops that I've been meaning to go to. And I kind of just like used him as my excuse, um, to actually go finally go and check those out. And so that was a lot of fun. And then another one of my friends came over for magic. Then we all went to a barcade later and hung out and played games and stuff like that. And so 
all in all, a very good weekend. Um, again, filled with lots of geeky things. Uh, this will tie in with something you have in your news for later, but I played with the Doctor Who decks for the first time. Yes. Um, I played with the um, Timey Wimey deck, and then I played with the 13th Doctor one. I forget what that one is called. Um, and had a lot of fun with both of them. And so, and then um, my friend that came down to visit, he played the the one you have with the original Doctors mm -hmm. and wrecked us the first game. Uh, and then my the my other friend who's local played the villains deck. And then we kind of swapped things up for the next time with a, and yeah, it was a lot of fun. Those decks are complicated for pre-cons. There's a lot going on there. Um, yep. There was definitely a lot of like, I was definitely messing up sequencing and stuff like that. or were like missing triggers just because there's so much going on. Um, but I was really enjoying it and had a lot of fun playing those games. And so, um, let's see in chat, we got some stuff. Sneaky pigs says, um, going to play the last of a two, um, for the first time in a couple weeks. Let's go. Um, and then Chunk says, um, I I've finished slash completed, completed 32 games this year. Get on my level. Dude, I'm so yes. jealous. Like you've like knocked out so much as part of like, especially like kind of motivated by your backlog golf. But I feel like you also complete a lot more games than I do just in general. And so like, that's so cool. Um, knocking stuff out. Um, and so but then, yeah. Um, with that, of course, let us know everyone what you've been up to hit us up on on that discord feel free to hop in oh something else i continued my um marathon of ve schwab's books and i finished and gallant um review yeah um, it's definitely not my favorite of hers um well i did go. like it uh, like something has to be last and this is probably my least favorite um i did enjoy it um it's a, it's definitely an interesting read, uh, but it's one of her standalones and it did not grab me. Now, part of that is coming off of the invisible life of Addie LaRue um, as the previous book that I read of hers. And so that, um, which I, I said this last week, I think is one of my favorite pieces of fiction of all time. And so Ga uh, Gallant definitely had a hard, um, a hard hill to climb there. Um, but, um, and then continuing my thanks to the library audiobook journey, um, support your local libraries, everybody. Um, Please do. I, I started reading, reading Daisy Jones in the six, um, which is, was recommended to me by a friend when I posted about Addie LaRue. And so it's about, um, a like rock band in the seventies. And so, but the audiobook is really cool. Cause, um, the premise of the book is it's somebody that's doing interviews with these characters and like the book is the interview that gets published basically. And so all of the interviews from the actors or from the people that they talk to are played by different people in the audiobook. So they're like different. That's it's not, great. yeah. So it's, it's not just people doing different voices. It's like actual different people. And so it's a lot of fun. Um, uh, and it's been a really good read. Um, uh, and then, um, I haven't started it yet, but I got The City We Became, um, which was recommended to me by my friend that came into town. Um, and um, so I'll hopefully have information on that for next week. Um, but yeah, so with that, um, let's jump into our news for this week and our first topic. This kind of leaked on Friday and then was officially announced by Sony and Naughty Dog. But we are getting a Last of Us Part 2 remastered coming to uh, PlayStation 5. And we're going to be seeing a lot of cool stuff. I know, Emma, you said you're playing back through it right now. Um, mm -hmm. I have been itching to replay it. And so I think this is going to be my excuse to jump back in. And yep. um, on top of kind of what you would expect for when it comes to, to graphic overhauls and stuff like that, um, if you have the PlayStation four game, it's going to, it's only going to be a $10 upgrade to the PlayStation five. 
um, which is very exciting. Um, and then there's going to be some exclusive new features from graphics, um, new outfits. There's a guitar free play mode. Um, and so if you want to rock out, you can. And then they're also doing a like behind the scenes developer diary type thing as you play. So you can do like director's commentary, which has me insanely hyped because like my yep. introduction to podcasts was director's commentaries for movies. Like that would like, like, I feel like the reason I like director's commentaries is like the same reason I like podcasting. And mm-hmm. so I'm so excited for that. We're also getting lost levels, which are levels that did not make the cut. Uh, for the final game for one reason or another and i believe those will have the option for commentary as well and then i'm looking forward to that yeah i'm super interested especially because they do so much mocap um that like i feel like the director's commentaries are going to be very interesting um and it's going to be so cool to kind of get to see them talk about because that's not something we get a lot in video games Mm -mm. like and so I'm really excited to get to kind of see their, their behind the scenes of why didn't this work? What, what was some cool stories about these scenes that they did? Um, and so I'm really looking forward to going to, the, to that. And then um, the final and perhaps biggest gameplay feature is that there's going to be a roguelike survival mode called The Last of Us Part, uh, Part 2 Remastered No Return. Um, where you are going to be fighting off like hordes of infected um, in a roguelike. And so feel us. Yeah. They've Delightful. already, yeah. They've already shown a bunch of other playable characters besides the ones that are playable in the game. And so they said they'll be unlocking more as you play and stuff like that. So I'm really excited about that too. Like, I don't know necessarily how much of that I am going to play, mm-hmm. but uh, cause it's going to kind of just depend on the progression and roguelikes can be hit or miss for me, uh, where sometimes they just either don't feel rewarding or feel like it is too much of a grind to get good. Um, especially like when I, you get stuck, like that's what happened to me with dead cells is I got to the yep. point where it was like the grind to beat the, the boss that I was stuck on was too much. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I'm curious to what that's going to look like. Uh, but it sounds super cool and i am very excited about it um and then in chat sneaky says ten dollar upgrade is such a huge thing um it's awesome that they did that yeah i i think that that is probably the biggest like the biggest thing about this is that like i know sony took a lot of flack um using air quotes for the flack um around the last of us remake or part one um, being a like full retail priced game. Mm-hmm. Um, and I definitely feel like there was still flack for them for this. Um, but I feel like this $10 upgrade thing is like, you have no place to complain because yeah. you, if you are really bothered by it being full retail, you can just go buy the last of us part two for PS4 and then yeah. upgrade it for $10. Like, exactly. <laughs> Um, and so I, I think that that is such a huge thing. Um, and then we already talked about the director's commentary as an example, but what are some things that you're looking forward to for this as, as somebody who's on their, their nth playthrough of the last their of us part two. Through. I mean, I'm excited for the, like the quote unquote lost levels. Um, just cause I love that kind of like, here's the final product. And here's, it's almost like deleted scenes to mm-hmm. me. Um, but like getting to see some of the things that didn't make it into the final game. Because that seems fun. Um, and director's commentary. That's also like, those are the two things that I'm like, yes. Give it to me. I want it. I want to see all of the things that, you know, are like extra material that got left on the cutting board Mm -hmm. and what your like you know process was and the making of this game and all of that because that's my kind of thing obviously as a film person Mm -hmm. i love all of that like um how it's made stuff 
and even just getting to explore the um, little bits and pieces that didn't necessarily make it. Uh, oh, and I should say for this, I forgot to mention, this releases on January 19th. So we're like a month and a half, or I guess two months away from release, um, which is super exciting also. Like, uh, just like how quickly this is dropping. And so. Quickly. Uh, yeah, I'm excited. I'm, I will most likely be doing some, uh, some runs on my next stream of that roguelike mode. Uh, just yep. to see what it's like. And so and doing like a first playthrough of it. And so I um, am definitely looking forward to that. As somebody who puts The Last of Us Part 2 as like my favorite game of all time. Give me more. Let's go. Yeah. It's going to be awesome. I'm so excited I, to get back into it. I mean, I love the game, especially since I played two before I played one. So, which we've discussed on multiple occasions throughout the course of this podcast. Um, I'm just excited for the whole thing to like, and I'm glad that it's only like a $10 upgrade because then it is like much more affordable for someone on a tight budget <laughs> like me um, who then still gets to enjoy it. So. Um, and chat sneaky says, um, also, did you see Druckmann's comment that the remaster was work for new hires while the main team is working on their new IP? I had not seen that, but that's really cool. Um, yeah. it's a great way to like, kind of have somebody new come in and learn their stuff is, um, like kind of like learn the language of the, of the studio. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, that's pretty cool. And so I am curious like the new IP thing, I'm, I don't know. I'm reluctant. I feel like you don't like they, I mean, granted they could have multiple teams, but you don't release like a remake and remaster for a game. And that has a show going on without plans for a, for a part three. Yeah. Like, even if it's not their like next game, like, they're, they've done so much for the last with the last of us ip that like now granted if it follows the trend the last of us part three would be like the final first party game for or one of the final first party games for um the ps5 um so we have several years until that game would actually hit unless they kind of yeah. broke uh but them having like a new ip may be revealed at the game awards please um and then Maybe. having last of us part three coming towards the end of the console's life cycle would be huge um but we will have to wait and see um listeners watchers let us know what you think about the remaster um and with that emma let's jump to you for your topics for this week of which i have multiple yeah you're uh, hyped because well i so my previous news source for all things nerdy and geeky was Twitter. And then we all know what happened with Twitter. And I recently discovered a website that is entirely news for the nerdy and geeky people like us. Um, that has been my new, you know, basis for things. So I have several things. Um, first and foremost, uh, this I saw not on that website because everywhere I exist is imbued with all things Doctor Who. Um, <laughs> we got a mini sewed, a Doctor Who mini sewed. <coughs> it's like five minutes long. It's very exciting. It is David Tennant's first question mark appearance as the 14th, 14th Doctor. It is, you know, first question mark because. We all know he was the 10th Doctor, and there's been some... He's existed in multiple forms as the Doctor, so... But it's the first time we get to see him as the Doctor in in the 14th reincarnation. Mm -hmm. um, and it was for a Children in Need program, which is a fundraiser that happens every year in England. Um, 
and it's been a bit of a tradition that something Doctor Who related happens each year for that, um, which is cool. Um, but this minisode, it's like five minutes again, and it involves Davros, which for anyone who knows anything deep dive about um, Doctor Who knows that Davros is the creator of the Daleks and is just a very fun like interchange right after David Tennant has um, basically um, regenerated into David Tennant. <laughs> um, and that was very fun. And sort of to stack on with that because it's Doctor Who related, there are Doctor Who magic cards that are already being sold for insane prices. <coughs> BRB, try not to die over here. Yeah, you're good. And so while uh, that happens, I think that this is something that we've been seeing more and more in the in the magic community lately uh, with the birth of serialized cards, um, which um, kind of, I would say cul culminated, um, but in terms of recent history, the biggest one was the one ring, um, the one of one ring, uh, which sold for $2 million. And so um, we've been seeing this throughout with other, um, other serialized cards. Um, and I know the article that Emma, Emma grad kind of talks about those, but um, with magic, they, they've been calling it booster fun um, with the idea of these new art treatments then that kind of led to serialized cards and that kind of led to um the rise of this like i would say like ultra collector economy that like it's yep. not just getting the cards anymore it is these serialized versions of them um this has definitely led to like i'm not gonna say like a new side of the magic economy but has kind of accented this side of the economy a whole bunch. So Yeah. And this article that I link in the show notes also says that it's been a bit of a trend with especially IP related cards where like after their release there will usually be this huge spike mm -hmm. in cards being sold for insane prices or whatever you know six hundred dollars a thousand dollars whatever and then that eventually drops off into like and and that just sort of slowly decreases as mm -hmm. the hype settles in and cards that are being sold still after that like settle into like fifty dollars a hundred dollars or whatever um so it tends to be a big spike and then it drops off which is fascinating. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And I think some of that is that you can just only be so hyped. Yeah, um, like I know I've so heard, long. I've heard stories of um, like sellers at conventions where basically they actually wouldn't want to buy the serialized cards because the fear was that if the next thing comes out and it is serialized, it's going to, there's only so much demand. And so yeah. like, there's, you can't sustain that. And so there was fear for them for getting into it, but yeah. Um, Which is but, fascinating. Mm -hmm. And in my general opinion, um, next things next, I, the, the next thing I put down, I put down primarily because zombies, <laughs> I like zombies as a, you know, scary trope in general. Um, but we got a sneak peek trailer and potential premiere date for the latest Walking Dead spinoff, The Ones Who Live, um, for anyone who's a fan of The Walking Dead, zombies, <laughs> <laughs> um, or because we can't copyright the name zombies, Yeah. Um, latest fans of dead who come back to life and are now walking. Um, and we just got the premiere date of February 25th. So in a couple of months, like three, I think that's three months, roughly. Um, it is a Daryl Dixon spinoff series around, I think, 
time, like season nine of the main series in terms of timeline. So I have made note of this primarily because one of the actors I follow on Instagram is a part of it, who is also in um, a Netflix show based on a Neil Gaiman. Based on the Sandman. It's not the Sandman. It's the other one that is a bit of a branch off. Anyway, um, but I think that's cool. If you like The Walking Dead, the spinoff is coming. Mm -hmm. One of the spinoffs is coming in February. Um, so there you go. There's some news. Yay. I'm kind Walking of Dead shocked news. that this is just... I know there's one spinoff already going, but yeah. I'm kind of shocked that like during like the hype of The Walking Dead, we weren't getting spinoffs, and now we're getting these other and ones. And now that the hype has like completely chilled out, is when we're getting all of these spinoffs. I mean, yeah. I think we were getting the games around the peak hype. Yeah. There was like other stuff coming out. Oh, and I guess I say yeah. this, uh, season 11 ended in 2022. So I get it did go later than I thought. I thought it ended yeah. pre pandemic. I did not realize that it had, so it only ended a year ago, but I definitely think that that's, I mean, as someone who is not a fan, um, not that I dislike it. I just never really got into it. Yeah. Um, it feels like, like, why were we like not talking spinoffs in like season four, season five? Yeah. Like, I feel like exactly. that was the, the craziest time for the fandom. They're, they're Again, trying to keep it going after it's yeah. dwindled off. But hey, you know, sometimes we just need, you know, basic zombie shows. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And not so basic zombie shows. We need the bad zombie shows to make the good zombie shows good. Oh yeah, fair. As I say. To um, make The Last of Us Part 2. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, and in terms of adaptations slash remakes slash etc. slash video games, Netflix has confirmed for sure that there is a Bioshock adaptation in the works. At Netflix, I am mentioning that primarily because I love Bioshock. It's such a fun game, such a fun genre. Um, and I think, based on the article I found, they're sticking pretty close to canon and storyline. Um, and they have the Hunger Games director, Francis Lawrence, on board. So they've got some cool people involved. Um, I just hope it it takes a page out of the last of us book basically and like is true to genre and story and everything because it is such a fun like ip basic outline i think i mean cameron you're not a big horror person so i don't know if you've yeah. played bioshock i've but... played infinite um cuz okay. that one while still scary is also bathed in shiny bright lights and all that yes. kind of stuff versus yep. uh the first two bioshocks i have b briefly played bioshock 2 and noped out of it pretty fast <laughs> yeah so. that's fair it it very much falls it is like the perfect it falls right into my exact favorite like subgenre for horror of like futuristic sci-fi like monstery scary stuff so it's like i'm excited for it um as well as having that some of that old timey um what i'm saying is i had a brief um not in high school with like the gears and the top hats steampunk steampunk I had a brief steampunk phase and parts of that still come out. Um, and Bioshock is one of those things that brings it out. I love like steampunk horror type stuff. Um, so I'm, I'm really curious to see where it goes. Um, I don't know about you, Cameron, but if for, hypothetically this were to come out like tomorrow, would you watch it? I'm definitely interested in it. Um, I like the, 
I like the aesthetic of Bioshock a lot. Like, um, and I, as someone who like hasn't played the games, I love watching story stuff for it and like watching like the story explained and stuff like that. Um, That's such a fascinating story. Yeah. I'm curious to how more meta wise it's going to land now. Granted, this is like yeah. Bioshock Infinite type stuff, but like, uh, I feel like a lot, but I'm trying to avoid as many spoilers as possible. Um, but I feel like with how that game ended, um, I'm curious to how they're going like to tie that in. If we're going to see more of that, like with this adaptation, are we going to see references earlier? Like what exactly yeah. is going on there? Um, or is it going to be a relatively self-contained like story until we get to infinite and then things are going to go, go crazy. Things and so, explode. Um, but yeah, um, yeah. I'm definitely interested in, again, I find the story very interesting. It's just, it's going to definitely depend on the approach and like how, how gory they go with it, especially with like the big daddies uh, and stuff like that. But I don't know. I I would definitely be up for at least trying the first episode um, and see. Always good to at least try the first episode. So last, but certainly not least, we're going to encounter some more rumors. Um, with something that isn't as gory, theoretically. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> and hopefully, um, which is Spider-Man 4 um, movie, not video game, because Spider-Man 2, the PlayStation game, just came out. Um, so we're talking about MCU Spider-Man 4. There have been rumors, slash mildly confirmed by someone involved in the project, that it will be <coughs> a huge merger between the MCU and previous Spider-Man universes, or just universe. Universi. <laughs> Universi. Universal. Um. So basically, it's sounding like, assuming Spider-Man Four does happen as a movie, because you know things end up but it is MCU also, so it, it's going to happen at some point, is basically going to be almost like a multiverse of madness, but literally in combining MCU Spider-Man and actual past Spider-Man universe, not just in the other two Spider-Man actors showing up on screen yeah. together. Um which can either be really exciting and cool to see or could be done terribly. And as we all know, there's been huge IP rights issues in the past with Spider-Man yeah. over film properties. So it could end up being a huge mess for the MCU to like rely on this, you know, being a big like continuous character and property that they can continue mm-hmm. using and pull this story point plot point off and then have Sony pull out and say you guys can't use Spider-Man anymore. Yeah. So I'm curious as you where that goes. Any thoughts, comments, questions, I concerns? have so many thoughts, questions, comments, and concerns. Um, I figured you would. <laughs> namely, namely concerns. Um, and it is by no means a hot take to say that Sony knows exactly what they're doing with animated Spider-Man. Uh, Into the Spider-Verse is arguably um, the best Spider-Man movie ever made. Um, probably one of the top superhero movies ever made. Um And then it is also not a hot take to say that Sony has no clue what they're doing with their live action movies. Um, Like while there has been some like good sales for things like Venom, um, like Morbius is a meme, like uh, Matt, like the Craven trailer looks awful. Like I don't want to judge that before it came out, but that trailer does not look engaging. Um, Madam Web looks better than the other ones, but like still doesn't look great. 
Um, and so the idea of like pulling those characters into the MCU is not that exciting for me. Like it would be one thing going back to something like the X-Men, like Daredevil or not Daredevil, um, Deadpool, uh, where those movies are fantastic. And now we're pulling that character and uh, that, that part of the universe into the MCU. That's really exciting. But like, we're not talking about that. Like, we're also not necessarily talking about characters that are old enough that we have nostalgia for yet. Um, yeah. And so, like, I just, I, I don't know. I'm super scared about that. Now, all that said, I feel like this is also a well duh. Um, and they reference this in the article, and that's because of um, Avengers Secret War, Secret Wars. Like, this is a mm-hmm. movie all about different universes fighting each other. Like, it seems extremely yep. reasonable that one of those universes would be the Sony Pictures universe. Um, yep. And I, I feel like um, whatever this is going to actually play out as, like... I feel like that makes a lot of sense because we need, we as consumers and as watchers need to understand the stakes. We can't just root for the MCU. Now, granted, yeah, I don't really know who's voting, who's rooting for the Sony universe in this scenario, but like, like we need to understand the different universes and we need to actually have a reason to understand those stakes. That is more than, well, clearly the MCU is going to win because this is an MCU thing. Um, yeah. And that's why I've said this before. Like one of the phase five movies, I think needs to be set in a different universe, like not universe jumping, but just needs to be set just straight in straight up. Separate. And if that's Spider-Man four and the way that we get that build up is something happens to Tom Holland and now he's in the Sony universe with all of these, it'll say anti-heroes. Like, yeah. um, you know, like that's not the worst way of handling that and getting us to care about another universe, tying things in with, again, these projects that we know about, like, but now all that being said, I do feel like the last thing that current MCU needs is more confusion over what is mcu and what isn't especially when the quality of the sony pictures movies does not really hold a candle on top of the fact that mcu isn't exactly having the best run recently and so (laughs) i just don't know if that's where you want to be and like at the same time really with with the position the mcu is in right now with recent reviews you don't really want to be comparing yourself to Sony. Yeah. I, I just, yeah, it just seems so, I don't know if counterintuitive is the right word. It just seems so risky mm-hmm. um, to do something like that. And I just like, I mean, if anything, if any character can make that work, it's Spider-Man. Like the, yeah. the, the brand power of Spider-Man is, um, is insane and i mean one of the major Absolutely criticisms insane. of <laughs> go ahead sorry that oh, was okay. me agreeing with you <laughs> oh okay um one of the major criticisms of the sony verse is that you don't have spider-man they can't show spider-man um yeah. so like if this is the solve like i still think they should just bring in andrew garfield uh, and just have him be in it which maybe we do maybe that's actually like a connection cause, like i don't know um but I don't know. I'm just, I'm so worried if, about this, if this is going to happen um, again, it's, it's to go to a different, go to the Fox universe as an example. Like it would be one thing if this was days of future past X-Men, which was like a fantastic film, but we're at like dark Phoenix X-Men, like not exactly yeah. hyped about that crossover at this point. And so, but I don't know. Maybe Craven and Madam Web will like turn things around. I doubt it, but Maybe. like, I don't know. I'm just so scared. Like, I feel like the best thing that Craven and Madam Web can do at this point is don't be bad. Yeah. But like, I don't know. Like, I, that's, yeah. That being said, this will probably still break a billion dollars easy because it's Spider Man. But like, 
I, I don't know. Um, in chat, Sneaky Wait. says, someone tell Sony yep. to just make animated Spider-Man movies and then start making animated X-Men movies. I was just um, going to read that. Yeah, yeah. don't <laughs> tempt me with a good time. Um, I will, that's what I want in my life is some, some good animated, like we're getting X-Men 97 already. Like, while I strongly doubt Marvel is going to ever give away their rights after the headache that Spider-Man has been, uh, mm -hmm. I like would love to see them do some, an, like an animated X-Men movie. Um, I would love an X-Men take. I'll say similar to Into the Spider-Verse, not necessarily, but like, well, I mean, time travel is a huge part of the X-Men comics. Um, and, but I would love for them to not do that. Um, and just give us a super cool style, stylized X-Men movie. Like it, that, those characters are that so right. Cool. But yeah, again, I just, I don't know. I'm super scared. And I say this as somebody that like, I, I'm an enjoyer of things. Like, yeah, um, I really liked, um, the Marvels. Um, uh, it's probably one of my top MCU movies from recent history, which I understand for a lot of people is not a high bar. Um, but I really liked that, but like, there's no denying that that movie did not do well in the box office. Um, and so, yeah, I don't know this, this, this specific thing being a crossover just scares me a whole bunch. <laughs> Valid. <laughs> Yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see what way it goes. So. Um, and then something that's called out in this article that came out that I forgot I had meant to put in um, is that there are also rumors going around that Pedro Pascal is going to be yes. cast as Mr. Fantastic for the Fantastic Four movie. Um, they are just rumors. Um or, and not or yeah, yeah there, there's nothing confirmed. So just as a call out there, but yes, please. Um, I would, I mean, now granted, I said this in the checkpoint discord, talking to sneaky of like, yeah. yes, please. I'm a Pedro Pascal stand at this point. Like, Always. like put Always. him in. I would love to see his take on Mr. Fantastic. Um, yes. That being said, there was a whole lot of reporting of it is confirmed that this is happening which is what no there was no source saying that that was the case just sources saying he is in talks or he's the front runner or something like that which means probably right like that would be my assumption if that like, yeah. but um yeah there was like there was one post that was like they like put a picture saying or a, there was like a post saying that Pedro Pascal has been cast and then their source was IGN but the IGN post that they were referencing said report it reportedly or in talks. Mm. And so it was like, that's very shady. Like, yeah, those are two different things. Yeah. And it was like, they took the image from IGN. So maybe what they were trying to do was give photo credit, but then they should have specified that and not made it look like, um, it was actually, it was actual like yeah. actually confirmed by IGN because that is not yep. what happened and so uh, but yeah again please yes let's do it Pedro Pascal as as Mr. Fantastic give us a different take on the character um, we don't need to see the origin story we don't need like give us a um, an, just I, pull I, an I say MCU older Spider-Man exactly like something happened there was cosmic radiation they have powers now let's go yeah <laughs> Um, yeah, I want to believe. I want to believe so much that it will be good. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we just got to do, but hopefully it is better than not. So that's everything on my end. Yeah. Nice. Listeners, let us know. Am I completely off base with the Spider-Man take? If you think I'm off base, you're probably off base. Just saying. Um, but let us know. Are you interested in seeing um, Tom Holland's Spider-Man cross over with the Sony Spider-Man universe? Um, are you interested in seeing um, what's going on? Are you interested in um, Pedro Pascal potentially being Mr. Fantastic? 
um, or any of the other news that we have discussed today. Um, with that, we are First Geek 411. Um, you can find us on our social media, join our Discord server, shoot us an email at 1stgeek411 at gmail.com. Uh, you can watch live on Twitch and check out the videos over on YouTube. And then you can also find us at our personal social media. Mine is Hugh Marwittil. Mine is I am not prepared with an eye in the prepared. And it's been a great week. Play a game. Play Spider-Man. <laughs>